dati da 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 dati da 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 dati da dati da dati da dati da dati da dati da da dati da da dati da da dati da good evening everybody uh, so welcome to the show uh, we are live now so um, those of you who are watching please feel free to share this or host the watching party so that your friends get to see it and um, tonight we have a distinguished and a very well known tabla player tabla master uh, master prakash kandasamy in fact he wanted me just to introduce him as a tabla player not tabla master but uh, i told him no as far as we are concerned you are the master so we will introduce as tabla master so hi prakash okay welcome to the show please tell us what made you choose tabla as a career okay this is uh, you you want the long answer or the short answer <laughs> take your time take give the long answer okay okay well actually um i started off learning dance at the temple of fine arts in 1984 uh at the age of 11 i learned bharatanatyam um and i was also learning violin by that time carnatic violin from uh, kanagamani vijendra shrimati kanagamani vijendra and uh when i was about 16 years old um i actually started learning tabla as well at temple of fine arts from my first guru shri suresh ramachandran he is a fantastic uh, musician who plays mridangam and tabla as well as flute and he also composes a lot of music and he's also a chartered accountant he's a gold medalist from colombo university if i'm not mistaken sri lanka and he's now a lecturer at university of auckland uh during uh, he's migrated there anyway uh, so i started learning from him and then um i started getting really interested in tabla because uh, even though i was quite good at uh, dancer in those days uh, of course now with my, my body no one would believe that but uh, i i used to be able to dance quite well in fact i did my dance aryatram uh, in 1990 about 17 why i started learning tabla and um actually the funny part about learning tabla was i gave up learning after one month that's the irony of it was i gave up because uh my teacher i'm um, sorry not my teacher my classmates actually were learning mridangam before and so when they um started striking on the tabla there was a, a tone and if, if anyone has learned tabla or mridangam you know in the beginning it is so difficult to get a, a, just a, get a tone Uh, some some kind of a sound even forget about tone so uh, i was going for a class and i was watching my classmates you know making a lot of sound from this two drums and i was like struggling no sound coming and all that so I, after one month i told my teachers sir i can't do this i'm going to take a break uh they are just stop so he said no don't stop i know you don't even have a tabla at home why don't you take this tabla from the class he lent me one use it and then let's see la after few months just try and come back so because he did that thank god he did that i went to i went home and i was in form 4 in that year in 1989 and that was the honeymoon year we were supposed to prepare for form 5 but what i was doing was i was just finding an every excuse not to sit down and study and then i said okay let me sit down with the tabla and just muck around and try and see whether i get the the, the sound so as i just started playing every day especially my right hand and then i slowly developed a sound i didn't know whether it was good or nothing to refer to and after two months i decided to go back to the classes to see everyone and my teacher said why don't you play i came to return the tabla he said no why don't you play and i started playing and then he said wow you have really improved and i actually could feel there was a big improvement myself at that point because i had a point of reference with my classmates and with that then i started becoming very obsessed with the tabla i was on the table in school in my uh, the tabla i used to call it the tabla because <laughs> i didn't have a tabla so i used the table i used to use the compass set and draw a circle on the side okay chonte the you know we used to uh, what do you call it uh, you know mess up the school furniture okay and uh, basically i was practicing every day in class on that then when i go for class on the weekends i would uh you know be able to play the new lessons so i was getting so excited and then 
Okay, so now the story gets a bit long. If you all have time to listen to this, that's fine. But we have quite so, a big area. I, okay, carry on. Okay, I feel that I feel that uh, as you ask me whether I, how come I chose to be a musician or be tabla player? Yeah. I looking, I, I I strongly believe I was in a way chosen to do this. I I don't want to sound like I'm some messiah or something, but I think I was chosen. Uh, because of the events which happened in my life at that point, and I think one of the things was in 1990 uh, December uh, we did our dance arrangements, and uh, somehow I won an award at that uh, at that arrangement. There was a big batch, the first batch of arrangement dance arrangement students of Temple of Fine Arts. And I won an award along with two other people. One is uh, Sashidharan Nair, who is a violinist today in in Malaysia. He's a fantastic violinist, and another dancer from Singapore's uh, Temple of Fine Arts, Sujata Rajagopalan. So the three of us won this Shiva Gopal Award for Excellence in Performing Arts, and I was shocked. I mean, I didn't expect to win as a dance student. Uh, I and that award came with a air ticket for the other two of them from KL to Madras to KL. At that time, it was called Madras, and I had a ticket from KL to Bombay to KL. It was a one-year open ticket uh, by Hamsa Vahini, our our uh, travel agency at Temple of Finance. So I was wondering why did I get a ticket for Bombay when I don't know anyone in Bombay. I was only seventeen years old, and I didn't know what I was going to do with that ticket. So anyway, I kept it. In the following year, I joined Taylor's College. I started doing my South Australian matriculation, and somewhere around March, Ustad Usman Khan, the sitar maestro from Pune, he came to Malaysia to Temple of Fine Arts to perform with his family as well as with other musicians and dancers. So when he came, uh, I used to bunk Taylor's College in the morning, go to Temple of Fine Arts by bus from my house in PJ, and I used to go and sit down and watch the tabla player who had come from. From Pune, I was so excited because I was, you know, seeing you know people playing at a different level. And uh, every day I would sit down, and then I, after they go home in the afternoon after lunch, I would still wait at Temple of Fine Arts, take out my tabla which I had there, and I used to try to imitate whatever that the uh, the other uh, musician was was doing. And one day it so happened, Ustad Usman Khan was walking. He did not go home. The others had gone home after lunch. He was walking past the room where I was pra- practicing, so called, and he opened the door and he said, "Who is this practicing here?" And I got a shock and I said, "Uh, so sorry, I, is this me?" He said, "Who's that?" I said, "This is Prakash here." Oh, I see. Okay, then he closed the door and he went off. So I was a bit embarrassed because you know this is a maestro looking at me playing. Okay. That evening they were going to perform and mm-hmm. i was busy helping everyone with the stage arrangements and the mics and the chairs and everything for the audience and everything and at that point uh, i was walking past the room where they were practicing he and his daughter and uh, he said come here come here he said through the window and i i went there and i thought he needed something so he said do you have your tabla here and i said yes i do have he said can you bring it to can you bring it to my uh, to the room now so i said okay i thought he wanted to borrow it maybe they needed another tabla so Thing. so i i brought it i left it there and i was walking out he said wait 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 don't go sit down he took out the tabla and he started he said do you know how to tune your tabla i said no i don't know how to tune he said okay just start he started tuning it and uh, after tuning it he said sit down and try and play this uh, my daughter is playing uh, a gat in durga i still remember the gat this is 30 years ago but i still remember the whole incident and it was in durga raga and she said can you play can you please play uh, tintal along with her the take up tintal and i was shocked i said okay okay in the room la okay la. so i started playing and uh, after i played he started while playing he said okay, why don't you solo some you know play some small solo in between i said i don't know anything i said i, I just know how to play the take up that's all i know and he said okay fine Do you have a? Because I was wearing a T-shirt and jeans, and I was sweating, and I was, you know, helping with the setup. He said, "Do you have a nice kurta with you?" I said, "Yeah, I do. I'm going to change and watch the show after this." He said, "No, you're going to change, and you're going to join us on stage." He said, and I got a shock okay. of my life, and I said, uh-huh. "Oh my God, um, uh, Usman, Usmanji!" I said, "I cannot do this. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I, I was just flabbergasted, and I couldn't say no to him because he was such a great maestro." 
to say no to someone like that also is scary. But I, I was so scared. I just said, no, I can't. He said, no, you're going to do it. And then I, I went to have a, my bath at Temple of Fine Arts. I had my bath. And while bathing, I'm thinking, this is crazy. You know, I went back to him after the bath and I said, I went to his feet. He was standing on a on a staircase you know, and I was down. And I just went to his feet. I touched his feet and I said, I am so sorry. I cannot play. I said, okay. and he took my face. He held my face with both his hands. And he said, you are going to play today. There is nothing else. Okay. And that was, that was like such a strong force uh, telling me to do it. And uh, Swamiji, the founder of Temple of Finance was there. And mm -hmm. I played that day and I don't know what I did. I just survived on the stage. And the other Tamil player was playing. He was telling me play something. I said, I can't play anything solo. I was just playing the, you know, take uh, the rhythm of Tintal. I was just playing from beginning to end. And after that, uh, what happened was Usmanji actually uh, told me after the show, he said, you have a very good talent and good hand. Why don't you come and study in India for a little while, you know, in okay. your holidays? Why don't you come mm -hmm. and study Tabla for a while? You can okay. stay in my house. I'll take care of you. I said, where is your house? And okay. where do you live? He said, and he said, Pune. And I said, where is Pune? I didn't even know where Pune was at that point. I was so okay. young. Okay. I didn't know India was uh -huh. Bombay, you know. And he said, uh, Pune is like four hours from Bombay. And at that point, I said, oh, my God, I've got, a, I've got an air ticket to, do, to go there, you know. Um, and so I it was said, meant to okay. be. Sorry? It was meant to be. Yeah, it was meant to be. And I went to India and I and the, the, the biggest the biggest gift I had was at that point uh, when I went to India. Uh, I mean, all of us in Malaysia, we knew only one or two tabla players. That was Alaraka, Ustad Alaraka and Zakir Hussain. Uh, and so for us, that was tabla. And when I went there, I was thinking that he was going to send me to you know, somebody else in Pune, you know, not such a big name maybe. But when I went there, he actually told me, I'm going to send you to Ustad Allah Raka to learn Tabla. For those of you who don't know Tabla, Ustad Allah Raka is the father of uh, Ustad Zakir Hussain. Yes. And for me, that at the age of 18, I was, it was a dream. It was just surreal for me because I could not believe I'm going to be seeing them is one thing, but learning, you know, another thing. So I was there for three months um, for my holidays and I, I, I really, you know, got bitten by the bug. I came back. I had classes with him. That's another story. I'm not going to go there. You, you, yes. you, you, you learned uh, from And Mr. then I came back. You, you learned from Yes, I had okay. classes with him. Okay, great. Yes. And also, also with uh, his senior student, uh, Kedar Karat who is also now teaching at Temple of Fine Arts in Coimbatore. Uh, so it was it was very, very surreal for me. And uh, if you ask me, I think this whole experience was what made me think of Tabla more seriously. And when I came back to Malaysia, I could not focus on my on my academics. I, I had to do a, I was doing some IT course uh, at a college from ICL, it was called. And I, I didn't do well. And I after that, decided I want to go to Pune and study Tabla and do something. But Swamiji from Temple of Finance, when I spoke to him about it, because my whole family, we are devotees of Swamiji, Swami Shantanan Saraswati. So when I spoke to him to ask him for permission, he said, yes, you can go, but I want you to have a degree. I want you to have minimum a degree, you know, okay. so at least get a degree while studying there. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I, I found out that, that I could do a, a a Bachelor of Arts in English Literature, uh, believe it or not, at the Pune University in a college which is affiliated to the university. So I, myself and Kumar and Umesh, uh, that, not, uh, actually the, the first trip when we went was myself, Kumar and Umesh Shetty from TFA, Kumar Kartigesu, Sitar uh, player. Three of us went in December for when I had my holidays. And then when I came back, I wanted to go back again. Kumar also wanted to go back. So uh, we both got admission into the University of Pune and we okay. got into uh, the course. And then I started learning. I was there for six years, finally, the total almost six years, three years for my degree. And then I went back to do my master's after I got married in Malaysia. I went back after getting married. Uh, and so it, it, has been, it has been for me when I look back, when I came back and I, I, and I did this knowing fully well, my parents were not too happy, but Swamiji was 
the one who really backed me up and said no he told them don't worry he'll be fine this is what he's he he's he's going to do he's going to be fine in that and uh, if not for swami ji giving me the encouragement um, in the literal sense of giving courage you know encouragement he, if he was not the one there to do that for me uh, i don't mm-hmm. think i would have continued so i think okay. i think the big part of my life is swami ji's uh, constant uh, saying to me yes in the face of society which has got its worries about living and surviving which is very true and very real uh, somehow everything has fallen into place so uh, i do think that um, i do think that our my 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 being in this is is not totally my choice it is it is a, a thing which is like a conspiracy to get me into it because i like to do it so i guess that's the long answer for that one thanks, short thanks. question Yes, thanks. Uh, very interesting. Uh, I, I think looking at it from from our perspective, uh, it is destined yeah. to be. And uh, yeah. okay, um, not many people know this, but of course you you mentioned it a little earlier that uh, you were also yeah. a dancer. You took Arangitra. You took part in that Daniel advertisement. Just tell us uh, uh, briefly about that experience, uh, taking part in dance programs and uh, uh, Arangitra. Yeah. Okay uh I think the the dance part I had a natural ability and a skill um I I don't know how and I had a very good teacher my teacher in Temple of Fine Arts is uh, Vasuki Sivanesan Srimati Vasuki Sivanesan who is actually also the teacher of a lot of the good dancers in in TFA um if you know Mavin Ku as well she's also Mavin Kus uh, teacher, uh, beginning in the beginning, and he always he's got so much of respect for her. So mm-hmm. I started learning from her, and she really liked me a lot, and she okay. uh, always encouraging of me. And uh, I think uh, because of that, I um, uh, okay, yeah. I just before I forget uh, a very important thing, I just must okay. go back to the earliest. Um, Kenya, Kenya. I just got it. I just got a reminder, and yeah, it's not, it's not, not a, pass you a note. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, this is different because I, I did mention I didn't finish my story when I went back to Pune to study at the at my uh, degree. I didn't go back to Ustad Alaraka to learn. Ustad Usmanji told me I need you to go to someone who can teach you the traditional way, and you know you don't need to travel all the way to Bombay and come back. So. uh in pune itself my guru who took care of me and who taught me everything i need to know about tabla after that till till the time he 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 was no more is ustad mohammad hanif mirajkar and i i am i'm very sorry i forgot to mention that just now because in the excitement of thinking my story was too long i decided to edit the wrong part out so i'm just telling you all now that my teacher's name ustad mohammad hanif mirajkar he is a fantastic teacher his son nawaz mirajkar is also the teacher a fantastic tabla player who teaches at the temple of fine arts singapore and his uh, his uh, other students is uh, uh, vigneshwar ramakrishnan who is a fantastic tabla player in malaysia as well we call him vicky for short and uh, students of of uh, of uh, nawaz are also teaching all over the, the place in australia as well as shivakumar balakrishnan who teaches there so my teachers actually uh, contributed to the spread of tabla in the correct sense in the correct garana in the correct uh, teaching style he was the one he was the one who was um, responsible for all of us to be who we are today uh, and so i cannot forget to mention that and i, I apologize for uh, to him and to whoever else that i forgotten to mention the most important thing and i thank my wife for reminding me Uh, I got the note from her just now. Okay. Okay. So dance dance was a big part and I think Uspanji told me uh, later on he said because you dance you you had a lot of rhythm you felt in your body. So your sense of rhythm is very strong because you're dancing the rhythms, right? So uh, and also I believe whatever you learn when you are very young before you have a very conscious uh, idea of mind it stays in inside your body and your psyche longer so that's why starting anything uh, in the performing arts in a young age is more mm-hmm. advisable because uh, 
our conscious minds tend to tend to take over the learning process sometimes and, and interrupt sometimes and learning tabla was a bit late for me it was 16 i was already getting into my own personality my own thing but my dance part if you ask me till today it's very much a part of me uh, uh today i i don't i cannot dance if i dance i might get a heart attack i might get a stroke because of my weight but uh the 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 feeling which i had from dancing has helped me so much in uh, in uh, tabla as well for sure okay uh you just mentioned how your wife saved you just now i mean <laughs> okay just tell us um how did you uh, meet your wife and what is that story about okay so my wife and me know each other because of swami ji our our families were devotees of swami ji from 1971 on 72 and so uh i've known her since um i was 4 or 5 years old and i've got even pictures of her and me together with our families uh, at their house or with her family i'm with her and um we grew up together we actually performed dance together a lot when we were in temple of finance in our teenage years uh for many productions of temple of finance and um, also we performed music together uh but the performance of music was much later up in after after we got married but we fell in love and um uh in 1999 when i was still studying in pune uh swami ji calls me up and they say you know swami ji has decided on a wedding date and you come back and get married it's april 8 1999 i can still remember my wedding anniversary so uh it's exactly now 21 years and a few days since we've been married after i got married i came back to malaysia i came back to pune i i went back to malaysia got married and then i came back to pune i was there for a little while more i went on my first tour to europe without my wife uh with usman ji um that wasn't very nice for of me as a husband but i couldn't afford to and uh, of course then i came back and then uh i came back to malaysia in nine, in nine, in 2000 uh, early part of 2000 or last part of 99 i think somewhere around there and then um i've been in in tfa teaching i've been performing and we perform together a lot in fact my wife if you ask me is the more uh, creative composer musician than me i i i look at myself as more a uh, technician and i i have a feeling for music i love music i love to play for music but the the real um uh, talent in terms of touching music beautiful music is is jotsna my wife and uh, and somehow and that's why I, i think sometimes it is to do with with uh, a lot of do with good fortune and luck and some kind of weird astrological thing i don't know uh i seem to get a lot of uh attention <laughs> more than i feel i deserve because of of yeah so uh, that's the thing uh, prakash nothing in the universe comes undeserved so if, if it comes your way it means something would have happened somewhere so just you just thank you. be thankful for it um okay yeah, thank you um, thank you so much you you have traveled all over the world you have performed with some of the top musicians on this planet and um, can you share some of those uh, interesting moments or unforgettable moments when you are traveling you know or while you are traveling or performing because you know i remember you have, you have so many nice interesting stories to tell please share it with us yeah there are lots of nice things like uh the person who who really uh, is like a father figure and a guru and everything rolled in one is uh, ustad usman khan i stayed in his house he was like my father he taught me so much about music about practice about everything uh with his blessings i got i got a lot of places um i think without him he's the other big big figure in my life right uh, i can't go on about him but i've traveled with him quite a bit to to europe and to korea and uh uh to even australia a few times and europe we have gone with him from 2000 uh, 99 of my first trip and then i went with him from 2007 up to 2015 every year almost uh, in fact 2015 i went to 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 europe twice 
and uh, i never believed in my i never thought or or imagine in my life that i would be traveling to europe so many times that i've seen europe so many times uh and i think that's because of kabla because of my gurus because of their blessings it's it's nothing else and uh, the one incident which for me stands out uh, very strongly uh was um the first trip i went i took a tabla i had i and this is a this is a long story again but i have to share this with you all uh if you can see my teeth i don't know if you can see i've got a broken chip to come there. closer come closer that is also from you come closer and show okay okay yeah we can see yes we can see so uh that was also that, yeah that was also in europe in italy actually in 99 so what happened was um i went to i went to uh, france i went, went to italy first and uh, uh, i taken one tabla i had no money with me i had i had i was a student i was 25 or 26 years old i was still a student in my do my masters and i had literally zero in my pocket no credit card no nothing i had a, some us dollars maybe a little bit and that's it and everything is taken care of when you go uh, you're playing and everything so usman ji took care of me in every sense and um, we, i went one day cycling on the side of the beach in italy in tortoreto is a small town in teramo uh, area uh, sorry abruzzo which is on the eastern coast and i was cycling this bicycle and it was september the 8th i remember the date 1999 i'm cycling and i decide to take off one hand from the cycle i'm going very slowly and there there's a there's a cycle path which is made of tiles and all of a sudden there's one tile which is missing i never saw it i hit in i i my tire goes inside and i fall off the bike i fall off slowly very slowly and i fall on my face straight down on the on the on the thing and the, and i my hand my left hand is is cut very deeply and i've got you know it's a lot of bleeding and i have a concert two days later on the september 10th in a in an archaeological museum with usman ji and i'm worried about my hand you know oh my god what have i done and then the next thing is i suddenly see blood coming down and no one is coming up to help me there are people on the beach no one is coming up and all of a sudden this indian looking guy who's like maybe bangladeshi okay he runs up to me and he says what happened to you okay and all that and he brings tissue and he you know he sending things on the beach side and he brings tissue paper and he wipes my mouth Okay, and I'm like, uh, thank you, and I'm worried. And then I suddenly realized my tooth has broken, both the teeth. One has gone really up, and I start feeling pain because it's okay. into the sensitive area of the teeth. Mm. So I start cycling back quickly to the house where I'm staying, and I'm going really fast. And then I said, no, I'm not going to cycle because you know this is dangerous. So I start walking, you know, to the house, and uh, I get there. Usmanji, he has had a bad experience as well on that day. He went to the phone booth to make a call, and he left his diary on top. and he forgot his diary and he came back and he said i lost my diary with all his numbers you know there was no mobile phones in those days so he was in in another in another state and he comes okay. back home and he sees me with face bleeding uh-huh. and i've got blood coming out mm. he said what happened to you and i said this fall guruji and he said oh my god and then he said okay let's go to the dentist so thank god the host we stay with she her cousin is a nurse at a dentist dr gaitano i still remember his name Dr. Gaitano, uh, he was a pediatrician and a dentist, and uh, he was running a clinic in some area near near the house. We go there. He says, "Come, come, come, let me help you." And I'm thinking, how am I going to pay for this dental work in Italy? You know, and this is before the euro. This is when when we were using lira. You know, they had lira at that point uh-huh. in 1999. Okay. Just, uh-huh. The European Union. So I'm like, what the hell, man? I'm going to be in big trouble like this. and uh, so that he looks at me he starts doing his work on my teeth putting the cap and don't know what you know he he keeps seeing me he goes to his pediatric patients he comes back and he's smoking in the in the clinic italian doctor is smoking you know heavily inside the clinic walking around uh-huh, and okay. uh, i'm like at the end of the whole thing as i'm leaving uh, the clinic he's done a fantastic job and he says now this will last you at least another 10 years is it this was in 1999 eh? so he said at least another 10 years this will last you and i'm so grateful to him and i said okay doctor how much do i owe you i don't know how i'm going to pay him i said how much do i owe you i thought maybe i go back i send uh-huh. him some money or something okay. and he says no 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 it's okay. it's fine don't worry i see you in the concert tomorrow he says i'll see you in the concert tomorrow uh-huh. we just play properly he said <laughs> okay and i'm 
I'm so touched. And then he says, uh, you know, now you are like, uh, it, like you are like a Fiat. He said, and I said, a Fiat. A Fiat is a car, uh -huh. Italian car. Yeah. yeah. Said, Why am I like a Fiat? He said, because you've got an Italian spare part. He said. <laughs> okay, so the, the spare part is still there now. <laughs> it's still there. It's twenty years, twenty-one okay. years now, mm -hmm. <laughs> almost. Okay. So I'm mean, <laughs> taking good care of it. Uh -huh. The other tooth is, is okay. okay. I didn't get a full job done. He said this side was okay. okay. And he had a cheek to tell me, you look better than before. He said, he okay. never saw me before that. But he said, you look better than before. Some improvement. But, yeah, yeah. That was one of the memorable. Yeah. And that was that was one of the very memorable thing. But the scary incident which happened was my tabla broke in that trip. After the first concert, the whole uh -huh. skin okay. just broke. Okay. And I didn't have... And then I went to I went to uh, to go to the next concert. When I opened my bag, it was broken, and Usmanji was in total shock. And he said, "Oh my God, what are you going to do now?" This was before my tooth broke, my tabla broke. So my tabla breaks, and then my tooth breaks. So before my tooth breaks, my tabla broke, and then I went to uh, look around for someone who has a tabla in, in in Italy, in a small town, and there was no one. Thank God, Prem Joshua. You know, the fusion musician who's also a student of Usmanji, he was performing in Italy at that point and his tabla player had a tabla and somehow we made a connection and we got the tabla from him and the rest of the tour was all together about six weeks in Italy, France and Europe. I okay. used that uh, and, and France and, and UK. Thank God I used up the, the tabla till the end and we posted it by post from uh, Germany mm -hmm. okay. to, to France. From Paris to Germany, it was it was a real amazing thing which happened in that trip. So those are the that was one of the very most memorable incident in 1999. Um, okay, um, you won uh, four gold medals and four world championship at the uh, World uh, Championship of Performing Arts. I think in 90 something, 10, 15 years ago. In in 2006, yeah. 2006, yeah. Hollywood, yeah. yeah. Okay, can you yeah. share with us that experience? Okay, um, actually, to be very frank, that is uh, something which I owe uh, Sitar Maestro Samuel J. Das for, for that experience because um, uh, he was the one uh, who was a uh, very, very, very big part of this whole us being in the championship. And I went with him uh, in 2006 and uh, we were facing, I think, about 53 countries. I'm, I'm not sure, Sam, 53 or 63, uh, he will correct me. Uh, countries from all over the world who are taking part in this World Championship of Performing Arts. I think this competition was the predecessor of the American Idols and all those kind of things. Right? Uh, uh, so the, the guy who organized mm -hmm. it is the, is the one who came up with this idea of having different countries coming to participate. Uh, in, a, in a performing arts kind of Olympics. Okay. And uh, the tenth year that was happening, and we had to perform one minute of solo performance. That means sitar and tabla, or sitar alone or tabla alone. And there were a few categories, you know, classical, fusion, contemporary, so many different categories which we entered. We went with the Malaysian team of other performers uh, who were singers and uh, uh, models and... Um, um, dancers, I think, not mistaken. So that trip we went, and uh, the the experience was quite surreal as well. Again, because we never expected to win so many medals, uh, so many gold medals. Actually, uh, we every day we go in the mornings, we would uh, be told to go to this venue for the um, championship. We're supposed to play. We play, and while we play, if we are not, we don't have a sound check. If we don't, we are not happy with the sound. They told us you cannot look up and or put up your hand and say, "Excuse me, I'm not happy with the sound." We can't do that because what they are checking is how you are as a performer, regardless of uh, the situation. You know, if there is a problem with the mic or there's a problem, you're still in performance mode. You're still uh, confident. You're still not going to let that affect you, your performance. So all you have to do, apparently, they told us, was you put your head down. And uh, we will come to you and ask you what you need. And if what we can repair what you do, then you start back again. 
again, if you're not happy, you look down. So sometimes we had to keep keep doing that until we got the right sound, and it was quite okay. disturbing because you know you want to start playing for that one minute and you can't start. But we did it, and every evening we wouldn't know whether we got through, and we won't know the, till the next morning at 6 a.m. We had to come down from the hotel room. We were staying at the Marriott in Burbank, California. We came down to the to the lobby. and we would see our names whether our names were on this list the list would get shorter and shorter as the days go and every every morning we would see our names there with some other you know participants so we go back get ready quickly and get back in the bus have breakfast get back into the bus and go to the next venue to to do our next round and so we went on like this right till the last round and samuel das actually went right up to the champion of champions you know he oh, went to the highest okay. level yeah Uh, that means among the winners, he was he had another category. He was alone in that. Uh, I went with him until wherever we went, and uh, you won four. You won four remember, gold medals. Yeah, for four categories which I played. Uh, so when I when I went to the night, Sam and I were sleeping in the same room, of course. And so the night before the final day of getting the the awards, the next day was the award announcement. He said. You know, Prakash. He got up in the morning and he said, "Prakash, take a big bag today with you when we go in the evening. We're going to win a lot of things." He said, and I, I looked at him and I said, "You know, there is a limit to confidence. You know, there is a limit to confidence. This is bordering on arrogance. You know." Uh, so he said, "You just." I said, "Why do you say that?" He said, "Don't worry. You just listen to me and you see we're going to get something. I'll tell you about it after we get all the things." I said, "Wow, you're still not letting go of that." Confidence. No, I had a dream last night. I can't tell you the dream. I don't want to spoil it. I don't want to jinx it. I'll let you know. And uh, true enough, that evening we were in this huge auditorium. I mean, a huge hall in a ballroom hall in a hotel. I think it was a Hilton in Burbank. And uh, they were calling us again and again and again to the stage to come and get the uh, medals. And at one point, the MC said, "You know, why don't Sam and Prakash you just sit next to the." Stage because it's easier for y'all than to walk uh, up and down, and I I I I still can't believe that, and I really believe this again. Yes, we are talented. Yes, we are uh, um, we are maybe good at what we do, but this is also uh, blessings. I truly believe in blessings of of higher power, whatever you want to call it, God or Guru or whatever you want to call it. By, I do believe without that. um this these things are not possible and these are also like pats on the backs and encouragements from the universe to continue doing uh and, and be continue being a student continue being uh, honest to what you try to do and 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 you will be rewarded you can't do this with expectations that like you can't study tabla and say um you can't study music and say listen if i study music i'm going to make a lot of money or i'm going to become famous none of that you know in in usman ji used to say this is called nir apeksha sadhana a sadhana which is nir apeksha which means without expectations and it is a very um it is a very scary uh, route if you are living in the world and you have to take care of the worldly things but somehow if you do your job i believe and through my own personal uh, experience uh, i owe a big amount to my family and my wife's family for helping us to continue living a nice comfortable lifestyle uh which is not what i would think is easy for a musician and especially for me i'm just a tabla player i'm not a main artist i'm not a uh main instrumentalist i do not play a main instrument i i am an accompanist for most of the time i am even not even a, a soloist i'm not even a fantastic tabla solo player but i somehow am being encouraged and helped by the universe and i think its a purpose is i think my only sole purpose is to share this and make sure other students who are maybe out there who really want to do this and can take it to a next level uh will be able to do so and i do believe i see a lot of talent in malaysia in the last uh, few years especially i've got some students who have done their tabla arangetram or playing really well uh, nawaz students in singapore are playing really well uh there are there are many many uh, upcoming tabla players who are doing fantastic jobs and um, even i was supposed to have uh, arangetram in june for one of my students but because of the whole mco i don't think 
that's going to happen. Maybe we're going to postpone it to next year. But the hall was booked, the auditorium mm -hmm. was booked. So I do believe the purpose in life is uh, from now, at least or from the last few years, has been to make sure that this goes on to the next generation. And um, I've been maybe chosen to help in this process. And that is why I'm getting all the support I need, you know. Okay. Um, okay. I've promised your fans that you will perform uh, a few pieces for them. But before we go to that, since you already touched on it, I used to ask, what is that? Usually I, I ask this at the end of the session, but I ask you now, what is the one philosophy of life that you live by? The one principle. Um, the one thing I would say, I, I wasn't prepared for this, so. I, I, uh, yeah, I always ask it on the spot. So it comes spontaneously. Yeah, do yeah, I think just do your duty to the best of your ability. Don't expect anything and have faith that things will work out properly. It's very, I know it sounds very uh, naive. Maybe it sounds very um, unrealistic in today's world, in the way we live. But it has worked for me um, to many, in many incidents uh, in uh, times. And throughout my life, I've, I've seen it come true again and again. So I, I hold on by that. I'm just going to continue doing what I can, the, the best I can, as consistently as I can. And hopefully that uh, has brought me so far and hopefully it takes me to the next distance. And um, the other one very strong thing which I believe in, I know you asked me for one, but I've got another one, is... If you do have, if you do have a, a, a guide in your life, a guru or someone who you look up to, it can be an actor, it can be a, it can be a somebody you look up to. Uh, if you feel they're worth emulating, try your best to emulate what they do. In my case, I'm lucky because I had a, I have a spiritual guru, and and he actually, he has made me who I am. I really believe that in the way I think, in the way I analyze things, in the way I. Thing. And I think Swamji is the one uh, person who I am lucky to have been born in. It's again good fortune. I know I'm a rascal. I know I can do all kinds of nonsense, uh, but I have been blessed, even though I'm a rascal, uh, with someone so great in my life. So I think I think if you have someone like that in your life, try your best to follow whatever he says. It's hard, but try. And even the attempt is enough. I think that's more than enough. Okay. Uh, thank you, Prakash. So while uh, you prepare your tabla. I'll take you off screen. And then uh, yeah. once you're ready, I will uh, uh, bring you back in. So uh, 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 are you ready, Prakash? Is the tabla yeah. set? OK. It is yeah. already set. OK, you're already there. Huh? So now, yeah. um, OK, before I go on, there are some questions that you've asked. Um, wait. Uh, uh, some Roshan Naya asks, uh, where does Master Prakash purchase his tabla, which he uses to play for his performance? Just a short answer, if you can answer that. Your tabla, uh, where do okay. you purchase? I, I got the tablas from India a long time ago. Most of them, they're the body now. Uh, but the skin, I actually do it here in Malaysia. One is Leo's, uh, Baldev Leo's in, in Masjid, India. But the other one I also do with is one of my students, Sarab Iqbal, who's also a very good tabla player, who's going to do his Arangetram. Uh, not this year now, it's going to be next year. He also does the skin changing very well. He gets good skins from Punjab, from uh, Bombay sometimes, from Calcutta, from Delhi. So I don't have one person I get the skin from. I think the important thing uh, for me, I, that's another thing I like to believe in playing is you can buy the best tabla, but the whole set of tabla is the tabla, the dagga, your right hand, and your left hand. Now, the, the tabla and dagga you can buy, but the other part of the instrument, which is the right hand and left hand, you have to manufacture slowly with practice. You have to go on practicing, and it changes the tone. Whichever skin you're given, you can make the skin sound good if your hand has been practiced. Thing. So, Vallavanukum Pullum Ayudam in Tamil, they have the saying, even for a, for a hero, 
even a blade of grass it can be a weapon so if you know your hand is is able to move and and you practice properly correctly any tabla should sound good of course there are better sounding tablas which are easier and more resonant but uh, your your focus should be more on getting your hand right okay right tabla can easily be gotten yeah only a genuine uh, and a well grounded artist can say what he has stated just now it's uh, so beautiful and and it gives an insight to the, the type of person that you are uh, thanks okay um, oh, and and uh, later just in case uh, that i don't forget you said vallavanukku pullu maayadam tabla is just a, a instrument that um, a accompaniment you know but you can make your tabla sing i've heard it sing you can actually sing so later can you please demonstrate that for us right now uh, yeah please demonstrate for your students or, or your your fans they all waiting for you okay um i you see the thing is uh, to play something online like this number one is sound is not fantastic you might not be using headphones you might just be having the right side sound coming more um so i'm just going to play some some tukdas i'm going to say the tukdas and i'm just going to play them just one or two two or three tukdas and uh, i'm going to end with that um uh, not too much because i'm not going to do justice to it through this thing so uh the speed is you know da din din da da din din da da tin tin ta tak din din da da din din da da din din da da tin tin ta tak din din da da ti da tak da ti da tak da tak da tak da tak da tak da tak da ti da 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 din Okay, so don't that's, worry, don't that's worry. about it. That's beautiful. So okay, that's no, a, that's a sh- you're not going to let yeah. it go. Okay, your tabla, you can make it sing "Happy Birthday" to you. So yeah, we like to listen to okay. that. Okay, this is this is not my this is not my uh, discovery or something. This is actually done by a lot of great tabla players, especially uh, Zakir Hussain has done a lot of this where he plays the notes on his. Uh, the left hand drum where he plays melodic notes so uh, if you are using earphones then you can actually hear the low end otherwise it's going to be pointless it just sounds like duck 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 but if you are hearing it it sounds like this you know so that was happy birthday Whoever's yeah, birthday we, we it was it today. Clear. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So. Okay. Um, is there any other piece that you would like to play for us? No, actually, I just, I just, uh, I mean, I'm always trying to be a teacher, I guess, about tabla. I just, I'd like to test tell those people who don't know uh, anything about tabla. It is not a drum; it's an Indian drum. Actually, it is one of the most sophisticated. 
percussion instruments in the world and it's got a uh, a whole language it's like learning any language you know so we've got alphabets and uh, those alphabets are joined together to fa- to form uh phrases words phrases sentences paragraphs ideas it is it is a whole uh language just like anything else so like for instance just to let you know just to show you something um if i say ta ta corresponds to playing on the side now all this, the parts of the tabla this is called the kinar which in hindi just means the side this is maidan which is the center area and then in the center of that a black spot is called shayi which is made of manganese oxide which is a kind of iron um and this causes the ringing sound so without this you won't get a sound uh, like that you just get a flat sound like this if i don't let it ring if i take up my hand it rings so uh the the sounds on the side here they are like a language like it's an alphabet so this is ta or na okay then there's tin which is inside here then there is t which is in the center tita and then your left hand you have got uh, the bass sound which is g and then k is a flat sound and then joint sounds is ta and g joined together becomes da so uh, where is this camera yeah so it goes like this you know you have da if you have tita and kita it becomes a new alphabet called a new phrase called tira kita tita kita so tira kita right tira kita tira kita right if you have so like that if you have phrases now if i say kat tira kita taka ta tira kita taka if i say so this becomes a phrase so if i say kat tira kita taka ta tira kita taka ta tira kita gadi gana da din ta this whole thing can be played exactly like how i say kat tira kita taka ta tira kita taka da tira kita gadi gana da din ta kat tira kita taka ta tira kita taka da tira kita gadi gana da din ta tira kita gadi gana da 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 tira kita da 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 tira kita da da so it was a whole sentence right so it's a whole language Beautiful. and um, the learning yeah the language the, that you learn uh, uh, firstly you learn it listening then you learn to say it and then you have to learn to play so it is actually the literal translation of thought word deed or action so all three have to be aligned together and that is a yoga if you ask me this is it is nothing but yoga because yoga is the joining of your all your yourself your three different four different selves your mental self your emotional self your physical self everything comes together and what you say has to match what you do you cannot say something you cannot say ta and play gay it all has to match so uh, i i realized like my teacher used to say you know he used to say that uh, knowledge can be transferred from teacher to student but skill is non transferable so skill is something which uh, the distance between the teacher and the student can be like through zoom or through what we are doing now can be you know so far away i can i can teach today i teaching in in on zoom and i'm teaching new lessons to someone and they learn it they are so far away their minds can learn it but the the longest distance is actually between your own mind and your own hands because to transfer that from your own body into you from your own mind into your own body takes a lifetime sometimes it takes regular practice it takes you know you teach yourself how to do something then you teach to improve it you practice then you practice to maintain it so it's just different levels of practice going on and on and on and and it just sucks out your time to think about anything else it just it just has a, a self uh, absorbing thing so beautiful you know you put it so beautifully you know about that the distance between the mind and the hand that's so beautiful such an insight and also it's not mine that's my but that's my teacher's thing. words those are my teacher's words not mine yeah, yeah i'm i'm I, just I, trying to emulate i'm trying to hope that i can live up to that one oh, so humble of you no um the other thing about uh, knowledge the difference between knowledge and skill is that, that that's beautiful again you know that uh, knowledge can be transferred but not skill fantastic beautiful and um, okay before we go off yeah. um uh, okay this sarasa yeah. krishnan 
just asked you, you see um, where they have covered, uh, what is the most challenging aspect that you have experienced in your journey? And then the other one is uh, Surya Kumar Baskaran asked, what is the one routine you have, Anna, that you do during every yeah. practice? You want to take that question? What is the one routine? Sorry, you have? sorry. What, who was asking the question again? Surya Kumar Baskaran, what is the routine that you have during every practice? Oh. Well, uh, I think uh, firstly, even now, I think always start with very, very slow speed. And I think uh, it cannot be emphasized because I tell you at this point in my life, my body, I'm 47 years old. And uh, the last one year or so, I've been having a problem with my hand. Uh, one of my students is a hand specialist and he's called, he said I might be having CMC arthritis, which is a couple metacarpal arthritis, which is a joint between the first finger and the thumb because of overuse. So I've been struggling actually with that because I've been forcing myself maybe to do things at a speed which is not right. And so my body is teaching me to slow down and then start. Don't jump inside. So even just now I was playing, I was suddenly jumped into it. I didn't warm up, okay. nothing. So I think importantly, Surya Kumar, uh, I think that's Suraj, if I'm not mistaken, from JB. Uh, the important thing is start slow. Start very, very slow where you're comfortable. And when you, when the, I mean, for me, I'm not, I don't know whether this is correct, but your breathing, you should not feel any tense in your breathing when you're playing a phrase. And you want to play it for, without having any kind of struggle. So you're playing without, uh, without uh, holding your breath. Because in yoga, just like in yoga, there's two principles in yoga. One is called stiram and one is called sukham. So stiram means steadiness. It is very steady. And sukham means there is ease, there's comfort, there's no strain. So if you're playing a phrase and if you find that you're not having these two principles or these two things are not, qualities are not there in your practice, that means you're playing the wrong speed or you're playing the wrong volume, or you're playing something. So always play in the most relaxed way. Try to breathe normally and try to see whether you are getting stiff anywhere. Sometimes we don't even realize, you know, that we are getting stiff somewhere. So that try to be very relaxed and play that for a long time. And suddenly, if you're playing it for a long time, uh, speed is a byproduct of clarity over time. This is my mathematical equation after many years. Okay. Speed, speed is... The byproduct is not a product. You don't aim to get fast. It's a byproduct of clarity over time. So, so you go on the playing. Target. target is not that. Your target is clarity, and over a long period, you can play clearly. You will see after suddenly it's like a plateau. You'll be going every day like this, you know. Every day wondering, I'm not getting any faster. Never mind, just keep going. Suddenly, pop your body will take you up. Suddenly you say, Oh my god, I've jumped up like so many stories up. How come I'm there? And then you plateau again on that level. But then now you're plateauing with the confidence that if I plateau consistently, I will suddenly jump up again. So it's always plateau, jump up, plateau, jump up. So always be relaxed, nothing to worry about. It will happen. The speed will come. But everyday practicing is more important than practicing three days once or four days once. The body needs to learn because Usmanji says this, you know, he says, that's called Sharira mm -hmm. Dharma, the okay. law of the body. And the Sharira Dharma is to forget. Body will forget. Mind will remember. Body will forget. So in order to make the body remember, you have to practice. There's no shortcut. You, you have to go on practicing every day and your body remembers then only. Even if two days you don't practice, suddenly you when you come back the third day, you feel, oh my God. And I'm sure, Dr. Muru, you also uh, mm -hmm. learn sitar. You yeah. know that if you've been practicing for a show or some sadhana show and then your hand is moving nicely, suddenly all of a sudden you finish the show and then a few days later you decide to take the sitar again remembering how you played a few days ago, your body is not reacting. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. You know, like, um, you know, if, if you practice consistently every day and then you don't practice for two or three days, then when yeah. you go back again, actually you, you, you don't pick up from where you have left. You would have actually slide down back. So... Just to maintain at that level, you have to practice every day. Very and true. Then, uh, then uh, what more to improve? I think it takes even a longer period. But That's if right. you stop, you just slide down. Yeah. And um, 
Okay, yeah. I have to share an experience or, or yeah, what I've observed right. about you. Uh, not, not, I mean, okay, so, uh, when we were traveling to, yeah. um, um, when we were in New Zealand, um, I followed Swara's team uh, and all the musicians and dancers to New Zealand. And we were there, I think, for almost 10 days. And um, so we had a lot of time to do sightseeing, rehearsals, you know. And um, what I noticed was uh, Prakash was one of the most senior artists there, the, one of the most established. But every day, without fail, whether we are traveling or whatever else that we did, he'll make sure that after breakfast, he will practice. So you can, you, because you can hear him practice in his room every day without fear, no matter what. So that is something that really made an impression on me. You know, like um, amongst the, all the other artists, if he does not practice for a day or two, doesn't matter. But he made it a point to practice. So th that's what I um, uh, admire uh, uh, in, in Prakash. And uh, so that's the thing. Anything else you'd like to add Thank you. Uh, before we leave? Thank you. Master Prakash, uh, uh, anything else? Uh, uh, you want no, to thank no, anybody or say anything, you know, just in case? Any point? I want, to thank, I want to thank I want to thank you, Muru, for firstly um, ha having this initiative to, to interview people uh, like me and so many other people, like Sam and artists. And I think I think this is a fantastic way for us to voice um, our ideas of things and uh, we have the time now we have the conveniences to do it through the internet but it needs someone to want to do it and you and you made it happen and i and i really want to thank you for this uh wish you all the best that you all your other guests as well um you know can contribute right. like this lah. i mean in which thank you way. thank you master prakash you know i mean uh, uh, sometimes you know we had connectivity issue and all but thank god today not too bad and uh, I'd really like to thank you for yeah. taking the time and trouble uh, to, to appear on the show. You know, because um, it's just a beginning uh, a start in, um, initiative. So uh, uh, a well-known artist like you can easily say no and, you know, uh, but you have been kind no. enough to accept <laughs> this and, and come. So thank you so much. Okay. Uh, and, uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank all our viewers uh, for joining us, those who have given comments, uh, those who have liked and shared this program. Thank you so much. And um, I'd like to say this. See, uh, among all of us are affected by MCO, but I think artists are more affected than the others. So whatever way that we can to support and help artists, uh, we should help because um, being an artist is not easy because you have to dedicate, they are, they are dedicating their entire life to this, you know, so they don't have time to look into businesses or think about uh, social media or those kind of things. So all their time is just taken up in preserving and developing their art. So it is um, people like us that we should come forward and, and do whatever we can to help them preserve the arts. After all, they are preserving and developing the art, not for themselves, but for our children, for the future. Yeah. And uh, once again, thank you all so much. Good night. Stay home. Uh, stay safe and stay strong. Good night. Thank you.